Hello and welcome. Please read this problem, give it a shot on your own. When you're ready, press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, so the first way I'm going to explain this is what I think is the most direct, uh, but least intuitive. And I'll do that first. And then we'll break this down a little bit so you can see what's happening. So the equation they give us, A equals 1300 times 1.02 to the seventh. Uh, it's being used to calculate the amount of money in a savings account, and they want to know what 1.02 represents. So here's the direct answer. 1300, the number that's written first, is usually P for principal. And I actually, embarrassingly, I'm not sure if it's, this is the way you spell it, principal or principal, A-L, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but the idea is that this number is the starting balance. This is the starting balance in your account or the starting value that you're dealing with in whatever situation you have. And then it's being multiplied by a 1.02. Now, the rule is that if this number, if, it's if, it, if this is greater than 1, then you have growth, right? You're going to be increasing. If this number is less than 1, then you have what's called decay or, or loss. So 1.02 is larger than 1. That means you have some growth. And 7... Right, so we have A. A is, um, I think, the amount of money, the total amount of money. And seven, the exponent usually refers to, if you're dealing with a savings account, the time periods. This is some kind of time period for which your money grows. If you put money in the bank and there's interest, um, the interest applies every so often, right? So this interest applied. Uh, seven times, right? It could be monthly, daily, it could be weekly, yearly, but seven periods have passed where this um, increase has been applied. So the direct answer then would be a 2% growth because 0 0.02, right? 0 0.02 equals 2%. Where did I get 0 0.02? Well, that's how much it is above one. So as so, if it was 1.04, that would be a 4% growth. Um, if we saw something less than one, let's say it was like this. Here would be a terrible bank account where you lose some money. Let's say you saw this number, 0 0.98 to the seventh. Right? So for some reason, this bank account, you're losing money. Here, how much would you be losing? Well, this is a, a loss of 0 0.02 or a loss of 2% because this is 0 0.02 below one. One is nothing changing. It's 100%, right? So if you go below 100, you look at the, the change below one. If it's above one, you look at the change above one. Now, why does this make sense, right? Why is this a percent growth? Um, let me just show you the quick example here of this. So let's say we go back to the beginning and we have A equals 1300 times one, uh, and you wanna add, sorry, you wanna add 2%. Well, when you add 2% to something, right, you first have gotta find what 2% is. So it's 1300 times 0 0.02, right? And let's pull up, um, Let's just do the calculation. 1,300 times um, 0 0.02 is 26. And then you have to take $26 and add it onto 1,300. This is what many people do to find the result. And this would be the balance after one, let's say, year. We don't know how long it is, but let's say year. So this is how much money you have in the bank after a year. Now, a shortcut to this process is instead of finding 2% and then adding it, it's to, it's to basically take 100% of your total starting value, that's 1300, and then add 2% to it, which is kind of like saying 100% plus 2%. So we could just find 102% of 1300, and that is what? Well, 100% is one, 2% plus 2% is 0.02. That means you're really finding 1.02 of your starting value. So you take 1300, instead of multiplying by 0.02 and then adding the full amount, you find 100%, and 0.02 all in one shot. That's the first year. Then the interest compounds on that value. So you could do 1300 times 1.02, 1 but then you do it a second time, right? After the second period, this is the second iteration. So we have 1300 times 1 1.02 to the first, and then 1300 times 1 1.02, now twice to the second. Do it again, 1300 times 1.02, times 1.02, and again, right, you keep compounding this interest, that's 1,300 times 1 1.02 to the third. And what you might notice is that, again, this number refers to the amount of times the interest has been applied. 
this number is the, the rate that we're growing by, and this is always the starting value. And you can keep drawing this out. Um, there's no need to go as far as seven periods, but that's kind of some of the intuition behind this problem in, in exponential growth. All right, well, I hope this helped. Um, thank you.